uh, to the distinguished Speaker of the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Gentlelady is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, for recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yielding, and thank you for your tremendous leadership to protect and defend the American people and our Constitution. Thank you for your kind words about my colleague representing San Francisco, Jackie Speer, uh, for her leadership on behalf of the men and women in uniform. And you, Mr. Speaker, thank you. What an honor it is to speak on this important legislation with you in the chair, a champion for this national, the security of the American people, whether on the Armed Services Committee, the Intelligence Committee, other uh, initiatives, uh, whether it's cybersecurity or the rest, you have been a leader. You've taught us a lot about your areas of expertise and more. And because of you, we were able on the one of the anniversaries of the people, the um, ADA, to change the infrastructure of the House so that you could preside. You were the first to preside, and uh, now at as we turn, come to the end of your service and your leadership in the Congress, not in the world, uh, that you should be in the chair is an honor for all of us. You bring honor to this Congress, to that position, and I thank you for your service and your leadership, Mr. Langevin of Rhode Island. Mr. S uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of this, this year's strong bipartisan bicameral National Defense Authorization Act, the foundation of America's national security priorities. This legislation honors our fundamental charge under the United States Constitution to provide for the common defense. That's why Democrats have fought tirelessly to invest in our nation's greatest sources of strength, from our heroic servicemen and women and their families uh, to promoting American leadership around the globe. Thank you to, thanks to the distinguished chair of the Armed Services Committee, Adam Smith, as well as uh, the ranking member, Mike Rogers, and all the members of uh, the committee and staff for your tireless work assembling this bipartisan, bicameral legislative package that makes it stronger, it's bipartisanship. For our, let's just like to say some of the things that are in the legislation because as our country grows and our needs are greater, the, the cost goes up as well but how that, those resources are prioritized is very important for, for our colleagues who are making the vote, our public to whom we are accountable, uh, to understand our definition of strength. And that starts with a deeply deserved 4.6% pay raise to help ease the sting of inflation for our men and women in uniform. We're also empowering the Pentagon to raise the basic housing allowance bringing down food prices by directing more funding to commissaries and expanding support for child care services. So the, meeting the personal needs of our personnel is so very important, and this legislation does just that. Building on the sweeping progress in last year's NDAA to combat sexual assault in the military, this year we require independence, trained, independently trained investigators outside the immediate chain of command to investigate claims of sexual harassment as well. And our colleague Jackie Spear was so important in all of that. And importantly, we blocked an anti-choice demand to eliminate the right to travel uh, to access legal abortion for service members stationed in a state that cr criminalizes reproductive health. Because for Democrats, health freedom is a value for every woman everywhere. Additionally, this legislation delivers a record amount of funding for research and development at America's HBCUs and steers additional funding to other minority-serving institutions. This is so important because Democrats and now Republicans know that we must build a diverse, inclusive national security workforce, one reflective of our nation. By investing in these essential en engines of opportunity, we expand the talent pipeline and make sure our nation's brightest minds will help solve our toughest national security challenge with inclusiveness, with diversity, with our best. At the same time, we're investing in America's global preeminence. It's a national security imperative to honor our troops with cutting-edge technologies, equipping them to tackle complex 
21st century threats. You know this so well, Mr. Speaker, as does our chair and ranking member. And we are har harnessing the power of clean energy to ensure that our defense facilities and vehicle fleets are resilient to climate change. Meanwhile, we are nurturing a growing semiconductor industry, which we, which we reinvigorated earlier this year with the Chips and Science Act. Now the NDAA will require government contracts to use chips that were made in America, creating good paying jobs here at home, securing our supply chains, and bolstering our economic competitiveness. This year, NDAA also makes robust progress to promote American leadership in the global arena. The safety of families here at home depends on international security and stability. So with this legislation, we ensure that America and our allies maintain a military and qualitative edge in strategic regions across the world, investing more than $11 billion in the Pacific Deterrence Initiative, won $6 billion for European Deterrence Initiative, and further support for Ukraine's fight for freedom through Ukraine Security Assistance Act initiative. Indeed, Democrats know that the security of our nation is not only measured in our military might, but in the health, strength, and, and of our well-being and the respect we have for our partners. And as I draw to conclusion, I didn't say close, I just want to salute the people of Ukraine for their courage, to President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine for fighting for their democracy, they're fighting for ours, and the democracies, uh, their neighbors in Europe as well, and really throughout the world. Uh, so we have a moral responsibility as well as a practical one to support our Ukraine initiatives. Importantly, there are two additional provisions that Democrats fought to attach to this legislative pact. The first is a version of Federal Firefighters Fairness Act, a long-sought Democratic priority to make it easier for federally employed firefighters who contract certain diseases to qualify for federal workers' compensation. Our fighter, I call our firefighters our nobility. They risk their lives, putting their lives on the line to protect our families, our homes, our communities from devastation. With this provision, we take another step to deliver the benefits they are entitled to that they have, they have earned. The second initiative, is, and very consequential, is the Oceans Package. It's a very important, and I understand bipartisan initiative, closely negotiated with military leaders. This bipartisan legislation is a force for America's national security and economic competitiveness. Four in 10 Americans live in, a coast, in coastal counties, and the well-being of every family depends on strong, secure water sources. By taking action to conserve our oceans, coasts, and Great Lakes, we are protecting jobs and businesses, ensuring resilient access to clean water, and preserving invaluable aquatic life and their natural habitat. Our military leaders repeatedly have told us that the climate crisis is a top threat facing our, facing our nation. The climate crisis is a security issue. So we're all, we are also modernizing the NOAA Corps and securing more Hurricane Hunter aircrafts to help protect communities from extreme weather and climate disaster. Mr. Speaker, today we are confronting threats to democracy at here and around the world. Again, I want to, in closing, to once again salute President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine. Their fight for democracy is ours as well. We have not only a moral, but also a strategic responsibility to continue to support their fearless fight as we do in this legislation. In order to uphold our sacred responsibility and ensure that Americans are safe and America is secure, I urge a strong bipartisan vote for the NDAA. Then we will send it to the Senate and on to the President to become the law of the land. My understanding is that there is agreement between the House and the Senate in a bipartisan way as we send this on. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, for your great leadership in all of this. On a separate note, we're overjoyed that Brittany Griner is on her way home after the President's tireless focus work to secure her release. Earlier today, we passed the Marriage Protection Act, and we are so happy that she will be joining her wife uh, when she comes home. 
On a separate note, again, the Congress remains firmly, firmly committed to supporting the administration as it continues to work to secure the release of Paul Whelan and all those who put Putin, who, those who Putin has unjustly detailed. I just saw on the news as I was coming over here uh, that Paul Whelan said the president made the right decision to, to get Brittany to trade for that and then keep the focus to get him to be free. With that, again, I salute the Chair and Rank Chair Smith, Ranking Member Rogers, for their great leadership in accomplishing a bipartisan, strong bill that, again, keeps our country strong and measures our, six, our, our might in terms of our hardware, of course, but also in terms of the people who keep us strong. We're deeply in their debt. With that, I urge a strong bipartisan vote, and you'll back the balance of my time. Thank you.